Hello, everyone. I'm Martin G. I'm director of the Institute of Sacred Music at Yale University. We are an interdisciplinary graduate center here at Yale for the study and practice of sacred music, worship, and the related arts. And this is a continuation of our socially distant Zoom interview series. And today I'm with my, my dear colleague, Professor Marcus Ratai, who's Robert S. Tangeman Professor in the Practice of Music History at, at Yale. He's a specialist in the sacred music of the 17th and 18th century, the music of his homeland, Germany, certainly, and certainly the music of J.S. Bach. Hello, Professor Ratai. Hi, Martin. How are you doing? Good. Good to see you there in your home study. Uh, so, Marcus, we are in the middle of a Lent that is different from pretty much any others that many of us have uh, have experienced. We're, we're displaced from our communities of faith and uh, engaging in worship through screens, through through digital media, through uh, ways that we're not uh, we're we're that are very different from the ways we've been formed. And I'm already anticipating the heartbreaking loss of singing uh, my favorite hymns during Holy Week and Easter with my own congregation and hearing some of the great choral uh, music of our, our, of our traditions as, as well. And you and I share the uh, love of the music of Bach, right? And, uh, and of course, you've given a great deal of thought to it, especially the larger choral works and passions. And this is an opportunity for me to plug your book here, which is Bach's major vocal works, music, drama, and liturgy, uh, put out by Yale Press uh, a couple of years ago. A wonderful book that the educated public can uh, uh, enjoy. So you've, you've spent time with these great uh, works, especially the, the, the large choral works and the, and the passions. How, for example, if we consider the, the St. Matthew Passion, which we love dearly, how can that be a spiritual resource right now in this very strange and stressful COVID period? The St. Matthew Passion, just like the, the Passion of Christ in general, is about suffering. Not only the suffering of Christ, but it's about the suffering of humanity, the suffering of human beings. It's about death. It's about unjust death. It's about death <clears throat> that we don't understand. And so we are faced with death on a daily basis. We read about uh, the number of people who, have, who are suffering from COVID-19, people who are dying every day. And the St. Matthew Passion talks about what it means to die and how senseless dying can be. As I, uh, I've listened to the St. Matthew Passion virtually every year of my adult life, and uh, I always note that there's a kind of a, a tension built into the text and also built into the sort of orchestration of the piece. And that is uh, so much of the, the extra biblical text is written in the first person singular, right? So basically it's, it's I, it's the I who is singing. Uh, and noting the the biblical narrative as it goes by, and yet the at uh, at the same time, we're you get a sense because there are there are hymns going on, the chorus is singing that we're also part of this larger we. I mean, what do you what are we to make of that that sort of supposed dichotomy between the individual and the larger community? Mm -hmm. Let me share my, my screen with you and talk a little bit more about the original context of the St. Matthew Passion and of Bach's Passion in general. Uh, Bach's Passions, the St. Matthew and St. John Passions, were originally performed in a Good Friday service, um, in the afternoon service in Leipzig. And what you see here on the screen is um, an engraving of the St. Thomas Church, Johann Sebastian Bach's Church, uh, where the Passion would have been performed. So it is part of a worship service, a liturgical celebration, the celebration of the community. And at the same time, as you said, the focus to a very large degree is on the individual. So the whole congregation experiences the Passion narrative, but it's also, and to an even more larger degree about the individual. It's about the individual relationship between Christ 
and the believer. And here on the screen, we have an image, an engraving from 1724, three years before the first performance of the St. Matthew Passion. And in this engraving, we see the uh, individual believer standing on the right side, uh, watching the uh, Passion from afar. We see Christ on the cross, we see the paraphernalia of the crucifixion. And um, when we look at the um, individual believer standing here, we see her heart is burning. Her heart is burning in love for Christ and we see the little crucifix in her heart. And this is a very good summary of what the text for the St. Matthew Passion is about. It is about love. It's about the personal relationship between the suffering Christ and the believer who experiences loss, pain, and suffering in their daily life. And the aria that really most beautifully expresses um, this relationship is the aria, Aus Liebe will mein Heiland sterben. Uh, out of love, my savior wants to die. He knows nothing of a single sin so that the eternal destruction and the punishment of judgment would not remain upon my soul. So the aria is about the individual, about eternal destruction, about punishment. Um, if we move a little bit away from this uh, highly charged uh, theological language, it is about the experience of suffering in daily life. And so the savior loves the individual so much that he suffers to take away the suffering from the individual believer. So in that way, Christ establishes a love relationship with the believer and the believer uh, herself or himself responds in love for Christ. And it is a pity that we don't have an opportunity to listen to this aria um, because we would hear a beautiful love aria sung by the soprano. The soprano sings a long, very extended uh, note on Aus Liebe, out of love, which leads to, into, into a beautiful melisma. And we hear the longing, we hear the, the desire, we hear the love of um, the individual for Christ. So this is a, what is a beautiful way how Bach expresses the personal and very individual relationship between Christ and the believer, which is the foundation for his understanding of it, uh, the passion. It's almost like a, an, in, an invitation to us, the listeners, to step into the shoes of the person who is singing this piece, right? These yeah, characters. Exactly. So when you listen to the Passion, the Sir Matthew Passion, imagine yourself being this woman in this engraving. You are standing there on the other side of the river and you are watching the, the Passion of Christ and you are responding. So the um, individual believer that we see in Bach's Passion is the model for us, how we are supposed to read and listen to the Passion of Christ. It's very, um, much, it's very much like entering into uh, an opera narrative or the narrative of indeed any story where, where we are the Peter, we are the Judas, we are the um, uh, other characters that, uh, that fit into the, the larger story. We're Mary standing yeah. at the foot of the cross. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So in, to some degree, we are in social isolation. We are hearing the passion of Christ as individuals. Um, but at the same time, and this brings me to the uh, first movement of the St. Matthew Passion, at the same time, we are part of a larger community. The St. Matthew Passion begins with a majestic um, dialogue between two choirs and two orchestras who are going back and forth. The first uh, choir, the daughters of Zion sings, come daughters, help me lament, behold. And the qu uh, choir of the faithful souls asks, womb, the bridegroom, behold him, how, as a lamb. Behold, what, behold the patience, look, where, at our guilt. 
So what we see here at the beginning is a dialogue between the daughters of Zion and all these individual believers that are watching the passion of Christ, but that together form the community that is the church, not only the church, the physical church that was present in, um, at the first performance of Bach's St. Matthew Passion, but the church at large. So on the one hand, we are watching the Passion of Christ in isolation, just like we have to listen to the St. Matthew Passion these days in isolation. On the other hand, the opening movement already shows us and tells us we are not alone. We are there as individual believers, but we are part of a larger church, a larger community that um, not only watches the passion of Christ, but also benefits from the suffering of Christ on our behalf. Yeah, I think the our senses these days seem to be heightened to uh, the, the different ways that uh, we're connected, right? I mean, yeah. on the one hand, uh, we haven't, uh, we're sort of told to shelter in place, but uh, at the same time as we're engaging digitally through other electronic uh, resources, we're, we're seeing that there are, that we are in fact not really alone, that we're uh, with each other in our own sort of a single uh, settings. And, uh, you know, the, the, the place where I hear the St. Matthew Pesh in my parish uh, in New York, um, sings the chorale, so sings some of the chorales as a congregation, I realize there's debate whether the, the whether or not this actually happened in Bach's time. It but, didn't happen in Bach's time, but why shouldn't we do it? I mean, yes. <laughs> there, there is historical performance practice on the one hand, but there is also a practice within a certain community, a certain congregation. And if the congregation is able to sing the hymns, and um, why why shouldn't we do it? So I think we should be very should be flexible about, about uh, this question. I agree with you, uh, and I know plenty of people who uh, who would uh, would side with us as well. I certainly know that uh, as I find the time and during Holy Week to to listen to my own favorite uh, recordings of the Saint Matthew Passion, <laughs> I may be singing along with the chorales myself. Yeah. And when we listen to the St. Matthew Passion, especially during Holy Week, and especially on Good Friday afternoon, we know that we are not alone. We might be sitting alone in our um, room, but we know that other people are listening to the same piece at the same time. Yeah. And have very similar responses to the ones we have. A very comforting thought indeed. Marcus, thank you for your time today, and thank you for these insights into this great work. Um, again, I'll refer uh, our listeners to your book, uh, The Major Vocal Works of Bach, uh, Yale Press. And thanks very much. And thanks to everyone for tuning in. There will be more of these uh, coming your way. And I hope you'll, uh, you'll follow us on our various social media platforms and on our website, ism.yale.edu. And uh, we wish everyone uh, good health, stay safe, and uh, look again for us to be in touch with you. Thank you. Thanks, Martin. Thanks very much, Martin. Bye. Bye-bye.